An extract from the creative memoir, My Chinese Father, by Pani Po Yoke Lo. 1994. The conference is in London, my birth town. With my map folded to show the section I'm in, I lift it now and again to spot the street names I'm passing. Buildings rise above me, names I've heard of before, places I've passed before. The London School of Economics and then the Royal Courts of Justice. I stride forward knowing that years before my father walked these streets as a young lawyer. I'm nearly there. I arrive at Blackfriars Bridge and the sun is bursting out across the city. London has woken. Representatives from around the country queue up to register. A beaming woman in front of me wearing an orange and black cotton gown and matching headdress seizes my hand and shakes it. Hi, I'm Celia Fisher, Camberwell Social Services. Hi, Penny Lowe from Rotherham. And where is that? Celia bursts out laughing. I get a similar reaction from many other social workers and care workers, mostly from the London boroughs. There's a great buzz of conversation in the air. It's like the black workers group, but busier, livelier and more passionate. I meet Arabic, Pakistani, Nigerian and even a Chinese social worker over a lunch catered for by Worldwide Foods. Back in Rotherham, conference cuisine is mostly white bread and sandwiches, often drying up at the edges, filled with egg mayonnaise, cheese and at its most adventurous, coronation chicken. Here there are silver tureens that steam open to reveal spicy curries, brightly coloured rice and noodles, plates of chapatis, fried plantains and dumplings. Full and satisfied, we sit down for the afternoon session and discuss how our social services provide for the needs of minority ethnic groups, or not, as is often the case. I contemplate what my needs are as someone of Chinese heritage, and am then taken out of my thoughts when a suited Jamaican woman takes to the stage. She bangs the table and shouts, When I am elderly and go to a day centre, will they serve me salt fish and ackee? Sunset Over Sheffield, a short story by Linda Fulton. After a slow climb to the top of the hill, the man stops to catch his breath. The knot in his stomach tightens as he turns to look down and all he is left behind. A cool breeze whispers memories into the stark jet branches of wayside trees and he settles on a bench to listen and remember. He squints into the distance, trying to identify the home of his childhood, but window lights blur into a stream of yellow. He knows that somewhere TVs are flickering, faces are gawping at soaps or the news. Keyboards are clicking and gas fires hissing into an evening chill. Curtains have not yet been drawn against encroaching darkness. A lavender hue outlines the hills that were once obscured by smog and grime. He recalls the smoke belch and pavement tremor of heavy industry along the valley and for so many miles beyond. The deafening thud of a forge hammer, a searing rush of flames, the screech and crackle of cutting and welding. Blast furnace, rolling mills, melting shop. He's laboured in all of them over the past 40 years, from one redundancy to the next. When he closes his eyes, he imagines sparks arcing and spraying, the reek of molten metal hanging on the air, soot on his tongue in streets. Sometimes he still feels the tremble of giant machinery, vibration in his thick, blunt fingers. The landscape is cleaner now, the horizon visible, and black lung coughs have diminished with the sweep of progress and the crumble and collapse of corrugated sheds and chimney stacks. It's a mixed blessing to the man, for gone too is the banter of mates and the daily laughter that cut through sweat and filth, that lightened the burden of the jobs he'd known, jobs that had left him feeling part of something vital, something greater than himself. Red brick and stone punch imprints into the skyline, bequeathing histories long after people have gone. A nebula of pink and gold swirls beneath the canopy of blue, silhouetting the church where he sang and prayed as a small boy. 
while years later he made promises to a young woman, promises he wishes he had kept. He's alone. As the sky draws a veil over his regret, he pulls himself up from the bench and stumbles into the night. Earth Smile by Pat Phillips Locked in my arms securely, I will keep you from the flames. Safe in my heart, I hold you, lullabying dreams. See me smile. I will weave you a bonnet of love. It will protect you, wrap you snugly in my cloak against the blaze. See me smile. I hold you yet. Life is here. Life is our safety net. I cradle you along the path and navigate our passage through the labyrinths of fire. Cleave to my breast, I hold you yet, see me smile, life is our safety net. Wayfarers, we tread together, earth's lava flows and ashes. I am here, I have you, take my breath and hold on tight, as we move together always, through the flames and into life. See me smile, I hold you yet. Life is here. Life is our safety net. Sunset over Attercliffe by Brigine Crowber. The boy with his head under the pillow is afraid in the night. Mehmet prays and faces his mecca. Night chief Cindy with strong wrists is cleaning inside the tall tower. She hums to herself of loves lost and won, smiling at missing babies walking inside her eyes. Gentle Finn is on his way to a gig in town, bent over with his guitar strapped to his back. The artist in him sees the sky shot through with ink and grey. A magpie on the gatepost peers and pecks at old brown bags spilling cold chips. The sex shop is closed. Next door, the hairdresser's window is gaudy, with purple wigs and glittering tiaras. On the estate behind, it's tumbleweed. All is dark, all still. Just Cindy with her mops and heavy vacuum cleaner in the tall tower. She will work for years and drop suddenly, alone, in a garden, pinning out clothes. The boy hears his father shouting. He will always be afraid, even when he is 30 years old and far from this red brick house. The second bird arrives to scavenge in the dirt. Mehmet is prostrate before his god. On the tram to the city, Finn dreams he's a rock star and knocks back a can of lager to steady his nerves. A song forms in his mind, which he will sing in a time far away to a smiling girl he will care about. The sulfuric light looks poisonous, but the yellow dissolves while soft blue smoke smooths the skyscape. The ghosts of old workers walking together, wreathed in shapes in the clouds. The furnace is out, the machines long stopped and rusted as sun sets over Attercliffe. Night Under Man-Made Stars by Ian Enters. In the scales, these self-important beads, beetles, these shining pinpricks are parasites on Earth's flesh, dead to the swirling wind of infinity. A million miles is insignificant here. Electric stars bleed tar over rooftops. They forge steel bars of history. Inside, we suffocate on closeness. The way he slurps a lager, crumples the can in a fist, tosses it, misses. That yellow streak is not urine, but it would have been later. The way she sinks on her sofa, released from the checkout stool, she smiles a selfie at the screen, as if satisfied with this seat. The way a child screams because nobody is watching him scream. The way a child screams because somebody is watching him scream. Lace silvered clouds with steel beyond human grieving. A tentative finger reaches out, 
for compassionate miracles. Old Man Lost Among Trees by Ian Enters. I needed a canopy of new green and the damp musk of last autumn's leaves. I needed to tramp through the woods wilderness ways, paths fissured with roots and tangled with briars to find my centre again. But now, with bluebells hanging like grapes and celandine starring glades, I seek clarity but find haze, uncertain steps and confusion in a maze. I carry the year's anxieties in this day's memories, the one who has died in the well of sorrow. I am no longer a jaunty lad mapping the wood I will travel, but lost among yesterday's trees. But his spirit still lives within this older frame. I swivel, head in a spin, thinking the past has betrayed me to see the forked path, the rise of green, and recognize my place. He is here, my previous boy, showing the road. Fireworks, stars, sun and lightning through a south facing window by Jenny Vernon. We decided to go to bed and let the millennium see itself in. I was exhausted and mum's 90 year old body needed rest in a warm bed. I woke to hear mum's door open, then the clank of her walking frame and scuff of slippers on carpet. Worried, I made myself get up and follow her into the living room. There, silhouetted against the firework display in Gainsborough, stood my mum in her nighty, arms out like a little girl, face radiant, enjoying something she thought she would never live to see. I took her hand and we saw the millennium in together. I still see her there on starry nights. My buddy's friend, Luce, gave me a sun catcher she had made, a green leaded glass rondelle. The beautiful pattern was a Sanskrit letter, Tam, the symbol of the compassionate Buddha, Green Tara. Tara, the swift one, born from a lotus, whose eyes flash like lightning. Tara, the swift one, impediment of compassion, born from a lotus, who is there in an instant. No, faster than an instant, when we call for help. That's mine, my mum said when I showed her. The letter Tam looks like a figure five. And one was born on the 5th of May, 5-5. Five, five. That's for me. I hung the randell in the window beside her chair and the afternoon sun shot green light into her living room. Once in a day, I found her in the midst of a stroke. Her pupils shut tight like closed camera lenses so that her sky blue irises stared at me blindly. She did not blink. Her eyes looked like the great exaggerated spinning eyes of cartoon characters. Tom falling off a cliff. Jerry hit on the head with a brick. My hair stood on end to see this non-mother in my mother's chair. She seemed to be snoring. She couldn't breathe. I shouted, Tara! I phoned the ambulance and discovered that my frail mother's tiny bird body was too heavy for me to manhandle safely into the recovery position on the floor even though I'd practiced doing it on at least 10 first aid courses. Tara, Tara, the swift one, help. The room filled with green sunlight. Two ambulance men burst in and held an oxygen mask to my mother's face. Supported against their bodies, she began to breathe properly. Her pupils open looked like lotus buds to become human eyes again. Bathed in dappled green light, she relaxed into their green overalls and became herself. Well, that was strange, she said. I was asleep, but all I could see was green light. It must have been your jackets. How strange. Tara, the swift one, spun in the sunlight and I made us all a cup of tea. Builders, not green. Solar Eclipse by Margaret Connor A new beginning, 
a chance to draw a line under everything and move forward. The mass of cloud in front of the sun melts away. We see the heat. Bright light burns through our eclipse sunglasses. Cadmium red, crimson, orange, yellow, purple, green. And in the distance, a portal, an archway, a cave, symbolic of the womb, of rebirth and renewal. A portal between realities, an entryway to different lands, different times, a doorway to different worlds, to other existences. Could we pass through? Could we go through that door? Yes. Come on, hold my hand. We'll walk through together. A new beginning. A chance to draw a line under everything and move forward. Slowly, smoothly, the moon inches its way across until the sun is a teeny, smiling sliver.